just a quick introduction about myself. I'm Gavita Raghunath. I'm a principal data scientist with a company called Advancing Analytics. We've got loads of resources there in case you want to get in touch with us. Um, when I'm not working as a principal data scientist, I'm involved in loads of organizations as well in the community. So I'm part of the Women in Data Science, the Women in Data. I'm also an AI MVP. I'm going to start the presentation today by asking people a couple of questions. I'm sure we've got LEGO fans in the audience. Does anyone have, have has an idea as to how many different color blocks LEGO makes? I know you're probably confused. This is a talk about computer vision. You'll, you'll, get, you'll get the gist of this. Does anyone, does anyone want to have a guess? Six. No. No. 76. And that includes variation of colors, right? So you've got dark red, light red, different variations of red. Another quick question before I get into my talk. Does any, can anyone see those digits in the, in the slide? Everyone can? Brilliant. That's, no? No, OK. So you probably see where I'm going to go with this talk. If you can't see uh, the, the, the numbers behind those charts, it's an Ishihara chart. That's a chart to test color blindness. Then you probably read green color blind, which is a very common color blindness. And my son's got color blindness. So when my son was very young, he used to love playing with Lego, like most boys do, most girls do as well. I love playing with Lego. But what he used to do was he used to see very di different to how we he used to see Lego blocks. So if I were to go up to him and tell him, that red man doesn't look all red and has a bit of green, he'd get extremely upset. So what I did as a fun project was to develop a little AI program using cognitive services to prove him wrong. Now, he's very much like me. He hates being told that he's wrong. But there was somebody else who told him that that's not red, that's actually green. He would accept it. So this is a little kind of a snippet into what we're going to be uh, we're talking about today. That's a red brick. That's a red Lego brick. And the AI probably would have told him, you're wrong. Your mom was right. That's actually red. So I love this. As a green block. And yep, that's, that's probability of green. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through step by step. If you've got interesting computer vision projects to do, we're going to go through a 20-minute presentation that hopefully gives you the ability to take, take whatever we've learned today and start your own little project. Before we, we get into the fun part, I just wanted to touch on computer vision. What is computer vision? And it's a field of artificial intelligence that essentially tells computers how to understand images from real world, right? A couple of steps to do this. First step is acquiring your images. And then the second step is obviously uploading it to the computer and getting the computer to understand an image. And the way it does this is it picks it, well, it draws several grids on your images. And then um, it uses uh, image processing techniques. Here we've got RGB value. So every little grid will be assigned an RGB value of 0 to 255. So once you do that, you then can go and do a lot of computer vision tasks. OK? There's more than this. What 6 has been highlighted on the screen. But this is probably your, your most popular computer vision task. So if you're doing multi-label image classification, through to detection, through to face detection recognition, and optical character recognition, all these falls under the umbrella of computer vision. So to do a computer vision task, there's a couple of steps involved. You start with capturing your images, loading your images onto your computer. Then you go through image processing. And this involves, depending on what you're trying to do, you probably try and remove grayscale, rotation, translation, loads of different techniques involving image pre-processing if you're doing computer vision tasks. Then you move on to feature extraction. Then you have feature extraction when you're doing a computer vision task. It's about detecting edges, corners. If you've got color histograms, you try and, and just extract all those features out from an image. Then you have model selection. And it goes through, right? You evaluate your model. You deploy your model. And then the fun part comes where you make inference. Can be very complicated if you don't know what you're doing, and it requires experience and specialist knowledge. And 
what we're going to do today is we're going to do it in an automated way, right? Computer vision up and coming is gaining a lot, a lot of traction in a lot of verticals and industries at the minute. And if you look at all the big cloud vendors, from your Amazon to Google to Azure, they all offer capabilities for you to do computer vision in an automated way. But today what we're going to do is going to look at Azure, Cognitive Services. I mean, yesterday there was a great talk on uh, Cognitive Services by Gossiar, actually, that gave you a comprehensive overview about Cognitive Services. I'm not going to go through Cognitive Services today, but what I'm going to look at is just the vision aspect that's provided within your Cognitive Services. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to fast track the whole uh, machine learning, computer vision lifecycle. What we're going to use is cognitive services. And it's going to be really simple. So you're going to see how we're going to do this, right? The first step is to create an Azure custom vision resource. I've recorded my videos because I know internet is a problem here. So to do this, you head to your Azure portal. You look for custom vision. And it's as easy as just creating that resource when you do this, make sure you're highlighting both. You've got your prediction and training that's being deployed in your same resource. And that's it. Now you go and go in, uh, fill in your project details, your instance details, and you head on review and create and create. Once you do that, what you will see is a page like this. And as simply as just going to custom vision portal, which is also available on a website, and you sign in. And when you sign in, you get a blank looking page like this. And that's it. You're ready to start, right? So to start any new projects, you click on new projects. What we're going to do is go through these steps, right? The resource that's been spun up, it's a matter of just filling in those details. And then it's going through this option of what you're trying to do. So with custom vision, you've got two project types. You've got either classification or you have object detection, where you're trying to detect certain objects within an image. Because we are doing classification in this, in this talk, we're going to choose uh, classification as a project type. And what we're trying to do is uh, a multi-class uh, classification type. And what I'm trying to do is detect red blocks from the green blocks. So it's single tag per image. And then you've got lots more options here. Now, I've gone for the general A2 option. But if you're doing kind of food project where you've got photographs of dishes, then you can go ahead and choose what, what's, um, what you're trying to do, really. So you've got retail, landmarks, and food. You choose something that's appropriate to your vision task. And once you do that, it's as simple as just uploading all your images. So here I've got a recording where I'm uploading all my green blocks. And I've only uploaded 35 images. So as little as 35 images, you can create a pretty accurate model. I'm tagging it as green. So I'm telling the computer, these are all my green blocks. And once I do that, I need to upload my red blocks. And I do the same, right? So I tell the computer where all my red blocks are. I'm uploading everything. And I'm also tagging it appropriately as red. Done. And once we do that, it's just, that's it then, right? You've got two steps after that. You upload all your images, and you click on Train, which is right on the top. And you've got two options. You can do a quick training, which is in a, in a matter of minutes. You get a model trained. Or if you've got something a bit more complicated and a lot more images, then you can choose advanced training. And you can set the times. So I think you've got a minimum of an hour, I think, so to, I think, five to six hours. You can, it's a slider option that gives you the option to set appropriately how long you want your model to be, be trained. And it's as simple as that. So that, this, this took us a couple of minutes to get trained. And what you, would be, what you would see then is a page that looks like this that gives you metrics about how well your model uh, has been trained. So you've got metrics like precision, recall, and average precision. It's a pretty good, give, considering I've only uploaded 35 images for red and green. And once you do that, if you're happy with the metrics, then you can validate it, right? 
So what I've done here is I've kept aside a couple of blocks that the model hasn't seen, and I'm testing it. And that looks pretty good, 99.9% .9 for red. And let's see what they do for green. That's good, that's a really good probability with just 35 images. Now obviously if I upload it a lot more, I'll get a better, I'll probably get far better accuracy. With this then, once you validate your model, and you test your model and you're happy with it, you can also publish it and, and that's pretty much model deployment. Again, really super simple stuff, you click on publish and what, what you get here is a prediction URL. Uh, this prediction URL is key for developers I've also used Postman to hit my um, APIs, and it works. So as simple as that, you've got a model deployed that you're able to then make inference on. What's really cool about Custom Vision as well, it gives you the ability to export the model to your mobile phone. I've not done that here because it's a 20-minute talk. But to do that, when you choose your domain, in terms of your, when you start off your custom vision project, make sure you're choosing one of those three options in the, in the red block. So you're basically choosing for compact model training. And when you do that, you get a whole lot of options in terms of how you can export your model. So you can even export your custom vision model onto your iPhone or your Android phone to do real-time image classification, which is pretty cool. So if, if you wanted to get started with custom vision, I've actually spun up a free service. You've got two services. You've got free or standard services. I've, I've not been charged for this at all. So if you wanted to give it yourself, you know, wanted to give a go on a custom vision project, this is the page that you need. I've also done, a, I've got five more minutes, I think. I've also done a second project. Now I've got difficulty telling these two birds apart. As one is a green tit and one is a blue tit, right? So what I wanted to show is I've also made, should it work? Did it work? Yes. That, this is already a pre-trained model. What I've done here is gone on to an internet picture. That's a Eurasian blue tit. And what I've done is I've copied the image link to just try and see what my model thinks this bird is, what it classifies this bird to be. And it does it, so it gives me a probability that it's a blue tit as well. So you can do lots of different cool projects, probably five minutes tops to get started. And there's loads of resources here to help you get started. There's the AI demos, which are brilliant. You've got documentation, a couple of blogs to talk about computer vision. And if you wanted to play with a Lego data set, that's a link to the data set that will allow you to get started. As a feedback slide, I'd appreciate some feedback. Uh, and that's it. I don't think we've got time for questions, do we? Yeah, I have time for questions. Oh, have I? I've gone through it really quickly then. Any questions? Luke. I, I don't think, no, it's API. So it's, you've got a, you've, I don't think it's serverless. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll have to find out. Any other questions? How does like, the AutoML and the community services compare to things like YOLO or RCNN or other sort of big pre-trained models? This is pretty good. I mean, I've played with YOLO as well before. Um, I think this, this is good if you want to get started very quickly. You've got pre-trained models. Y YOLO is also a pre-trained model. So I don't think this is a YOLO model behind cognitive services. Uh, I think it's, it's a neural net model, actually. So I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not, I've not used YOLO to classify Lego bricks. All I've done is use uh, cognitive services to classify the Lego blocks. What is? Yeah. So those two were two different projects, but they use the same kind of, so they use the, the model behind those two projects are the same. The only difference is I'm telling the model that they're two different tags. 
So with Lego, I'm telling, I'm telling the model is a red brick, green brick. With a bird model, I'm saying it's a blue tip, green tip model. So it learns from you telling it what the labels are. So yeah. Any other questions? Okay, yeah, go ahead. In your example, you would have two categories. You have lots of categories. Is there a more efficient way to tag it? No, you, you, can, you can add more categories as well. So there was manual, like, folder or yeah, the, or yeah that, that's the manual part of it. So the easiest thing to do is try and do some pre-processing. So if you've got, for example, your green tits in one folder, your blue tits in one folder, and other birds, and you can upload the images quickly and easier that way. Thank you. Cool. Good. <laughs> right. No more questions? Cool. Thank you.